And now we bring in the managing general partner of the New York Yankees, Hal Steinbrenner. Hal, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you? Hello, guys. How are you doing? Doing great. So what do you feel about your team? What do you think? I think we're better now than we were last year at this time, and we had a pretty good team last year. Um, you know, we added some important pieces in areas of need, pitching especially, and uh, I just think if we can get healthy and stay healthy, as with any team, that's, that's going to be a big part of this, but we're excited. And do the injuries worry you? You've got picks. You've got what, what was that, Peter? I was doing work in the computer. Okay. Uh, you've, you've got you've got Aaron Hicks. You've got Betances, uh, and you've got CC Sabathia as well with Severino. Any concerns? Well, it's always concerns you, you leave spring training, you know, with injuries, but the good news is they're not significant injuries. So, you know, Severino started his fit, throwing program a few days ago. He's coming along as scheduled. So is CC. CC hasn't missed a step. So, um, you know, uh, Hicks missed a lot of spring training, so it is going to take him a while to ramp up. Um, we'll see how quickly that happens. We don't want to push any of these guys, but it's, it's clearly not the way you want to start the season, but hopefully we get it out of the way, get everybody healthy, and we, we stay that way. When we've talked to you before, you seemed optimistic about Didi's return. Is this still the case? You still believe it'll be sooner than later? I, I have heard nothing, Don, to, to indicate that it's it, that anything's got prolonged. So, okay. you know, whether it's June, whether it's July, that's that's still the schedule as far as I know. We just had on right before you Aaron Judge and then Giancarlo Stanton, and, and we were marking the judge, and, and you've been around this team practically your whole life. Uh, it's It's been two and a half years, and he's almost the face of the team, one of the faces of baseball. Has his ascension in that short a period of time even surprised you, Hal? Well, no, because he's he's a great guy and comes from a great family, great leadership skills, and obviously great uh, great physical skills as well. So he's been a big part of it, and we noticed it when he was injured for almost two months. Uh, it was different, you know. It was different. He was still there every day, and he was still being a leader. But to have him actually in the lineup, um, you know, being one of the leaders of the team and actually participating and contributing, uh, it was a whole different vibe. It really was. When did you, do you remember when you first heard about him and then when you first realized that he was more than just another prospect but something potentially kind of iconic? Well, sitting in the draft room, um, you know, to hear that a to hear that a guy his size plays, you know, college center field uh, was, was, was pretty impressive. Um, so, you know, ever, ever since we drafted him and, you know, the same with, same with Sanchez when we signed him and, and Bird and Severino when we signed him, I mean, you know, really since day one, these were the guys that I've said time and time again, everybody was always asking for at the trade deadline. Everybody was always asking for in the off season. So, uh, we had a great time just watching them progress almost seamlessly, you know, through the system, through the years and, and, uh, here they are. Now, it's not hockey where you're supposed to have a captain, but you, do, you guys don't willy-nilly go about naming a captain. When you look at the guys that have worn that C and been the captain of the team, can, can he be headed in that direction? And what are some of the things you need to see for, to comfortably feel that he could be ready for something like that? Well, it is, it is not something we take lightly, and, mm -hmm. and obviously uh, it isn't something we do every year, sometimes many years in a row without one. Um, look, I, I think obviously the leadership skills and, and, you know, the admiration of his teammates, uh, whoever it is, and, uh, you know, their ability to produce on the field and carry a team when a team needs to be carried. I mean, these are all things that, these are all things that come into play, and obviously uh, a player beloved by our fans is a big part of it as well because our fans are that important to us. So a lot of things, but he's a he's a guy. Uh, Hal, do you, uh, Hal Steimer, the Yankees managing general partner, is on with us. Do you um, feel pressure and are you putting pressure on the people in uniform? You know what? This team hasn't made the World Series since 2009. That hasn't happened since the beginning of the last century. We've got to get to the World Series. Is that the way you're looking at this? Well, that's the way I look at it every year, but the, the, the players never need me to put pressure on them. You know, they're, they're competitors. They understand what our fans expect every year, and they know what they expect out of themselves. So I expect great things this year, and uh, like I said, we need to get healthy and we need to stay healthy because that's always going to come into play. But they don't need my help in any way, shape, or form for that. They, they put the pressure on themselves in a positive way. Now, with the exception of last year, the best team doesn't always win in the postseason. In your mind, do you believe building a team to win 162 is the same as having that team win in the postseason, or is it more of a crapshoot once you get through the regular season? Well, look, I, I think the postseason, as you know, particularly that first, forgetting the wild card game, they give the first series, it's only five games. 
uh, you know, it's tough. You have a couple bad games in a row and you're in trouble, right? So you got to go in healthy and you got to go in, you got to go in hot. And um, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's different than really any other sport in the postseason. Mm -hmm. I know some other sports have much longer postseasons. But, um, you know, it's, it's about being healthy and it's about being hot at the, at the right time. Well, I guess the way I'm getting at it is you had a 100 win season. Yeah. And yet the fans kind of look at it as a disappointment because you finished in second place. But I don't know how you improve on 100 wins. I don't know how you can expect your, to, to, to do more than that in 162. Well, again, I, I, I hear you on that, but we didn't reach our goal. And mm. that's, that's just a fact. It, it was a good season. Uh, it was a great season for Boone and, and the entire team. But uh, we, didn't, we didn't reach our goal. So what do we do in the offseason? We try to improve the areas that, as far as we're concerned, we're kind of the reason, or at least a pretty big contributor, as to why we didn't get past the division series. And that was, was pitching, starting pitching in particular. So we went out and got Paxton, and then we re-signed Happ, and then we worked on the bullpen. So we think, that we're, uh, we think we're a very, very good team and a championship-caliber team for sure and better than we were sitting here March 25th, 2018. Hal, in the years I've known you, you're, you're pretty even keel. You don't get that up, and you don't. Get, it doesn't seem like you get down. Maybe you do in private, and you've said you, you know you watch the games and you get angry, but you never show that side. But I've read interviews that you've given this year that the one thing that seems like it rankles you a bit is when it's questioned that the Yankees are are being a little bit. Uh, cost conscious not by not going out and getting a Harper and a Machado. What do you say to fans that say that or think that? Well, look, I, I, everybody's going to have their own opinion, and the reality is we spent $250 million this offseason when you include the two extensions we did. So we were active, uh, but again, we were active not taking all that money and spending it on one individual, but spending it on numerous parts in, in, a, in a real area of need as far as we were concerned, which is pitching. So that's what we did, and you know, there's been a lot of talk about revenues, revenues, revenues. I just think it's 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 logical and appropriate if you're going to talk about a company's revenues to also address as best as you can their their expenses. And as you know, in addition to the expenses everybody knows about, like the bonds and revenue sharing, we have big expenses in stadium ops, analytics, performance science, uh, the money for our player development complexes and teams, scouting, all the money we spend signing players. So they all add up in a hurry. And um, believe me, we understand that the fans want to win. And, you know, I, I don't want the fans, I would never want the fans thinking that we're not doing everything we can to win. Uh, as I said, we spent a lot of money in this offseason, and I think we're, we're a considerably better team. Was there we'll do that every year. Was there any thought, Hal, just the sexiness of a signing of a Harper and Machado that let, let's, let's roll the dice? I mean, that's something that your dad might have done. Was there ever any thought of that just for the, you know, the, the marquee value of it? Well, look, uh, even more important than that, these are two incredibly talented players. Right. I mean, there's no doubt we, we talked about it and discussed it, and opinions varied on, on both players. But I really felt our need, if we're going to go out and spend hundreds of millions of dollars, our need was pitching. Because in my opinion, and people might disagree with me, uh, that's the reason we didn't make it to the ALCS. Or at now, least the biggest reason we didn't. Now, even in Michael's question, well, if George yeah. were here, we hear that all the time. Callers saying, well, if, if George was still alive, we'd have both Harper and Machado. Does it bother you when you hear stuff like that? And is it, is it necessarily true? No, I don't think it's necessarily true. George was, you know, look, George was, was a very emotional guy. There's no doubt about it, and, and very intelligent and, and passionate and all that. But he also listened to his people. And, and you know, we, we had meetings every day in the off season, addressing areas that we really needed improvement. And that had to be the first thing and sometimes the last thing that we did. So there wasn't always a, a Harper being signed every single year, even under him. Now... It seems like the new thing in baseball, at least the last couple of weeks, Hal, is extending players that are on the team. You've done that with Severino. You did that with Hicks. We just asked Judge if he would be amenable to that. He said there haven't been any discussions. Is that something that you guys would like to examine and explore? Look, I, I'm not going to get into, I'll leave it to cash. I'm not going to get into who we've, we've talked to about the concept and who we want to or don't want to. Mm -hmm. But I will say we, it's obvious we can't do everybody at once. There are numerous situations we're looking at when it comes to major league service time. And, you know, the other part of the puzzle is how conducive is the player to a, to a concept like that. So more to come. Stay tuned. Um, we love all of our players. 
we love our young players, and we want them wearing pinstripes for as many years to come as possible. And we know the fans do, too. Now, are you excited about opening day, or is it, you know what, it's, it's, it's the business that we're in, or, or do you get pumped up for opening day? I do. I'm excited to hear we're not going to have eight inches of snow this year the way we did last year. So that makes it uh, much easier on Stadium Ops guys and grounds crew, and uh, it should be beautiful weather for the fans. And, and I'm looking forward to it because I, we, we put a lot of work this offseason into building the team. And um, I'm excited to see these new pieces and how they're going to perform and how they're going to contribute. Uh, a little bit off the path here, but uh, so you're a perfect person to ask about this. We're, we're hearing all about these rule changes, right? The, you have to face three batters in one inning. Uh, the Atlantic League uh, is, is implementing something the baseball is looking at of having the mound further away from home plate in the last few innings. Radical change, Hal, seems to be suggested by a lot of people in the Rules Committee. Some have traction, some don't. How is the feeling within Major League Baseball about the direction of pace of play? And is there legitimate concern that there is a younger generation that might be losing interest and that something dramatic does have to happen in the near future? Well, look, I, I think if you look at any major sport, there, there have been changes, uh, oftentimes dramatic, in order to keep the product, uh, you know, the, the product good. And um, unfortunately, baseball is different, obviously. We are not a timed game. But I think anything we can do to, to minimize how long the games go and to make the game more exciting for the fans of all age groups, um, that's something we have to take seriously. And it's something the owners definitely do. And I know the commissioner does, too. So we'll see what's, what's to come. But pace of play is discussed every year. And, uh, you know, we're going to do what we can to make this the most exciting game in the country. All right. We seem to ask everybody this. Do you like watching Zion Williamson? Say again? Do you like watching Zion Williamson of Duke? Uh, yeah, I'm not a Duke guy. Yeah, I'm not a Duke guy. My Gators, I really uh, had a bad Saturday afternoon there with, with that. But uh, yeah. there's some exciting players in, in college mm. basketball. College basketball is great, but uh, my team's out, unfortunately. See, see, Peter, you hear that? Somebody that's not a, new, a Duke guy, that's the answer. Not climbing on board Zion because he's great. You hate Duke. Yeah, you Peter hate hates Zion. Duke, Hal, but he loves Zion. Yeah, it's it just doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, but obviously, let's just be honest. I'm going to keep it a buck here. Hal's obviously not that dialed in right now. He's focused on starting a baseball season. <laughs> Hal, let's be honest. <laughs> When are you ever dialed in? <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm very dialed in right now. But I don't have a team to run. <laughs> well, good stuff, Hal. We always appreciate that you give us some time. We, it really means the world to us. And yeah. uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Oh, I'll probably see you Wednesday. You will. All right, guys. Thank All right. you. Thank good luck. You so Thanks, much. man.